Now we're going to see what does it mean to make tshuva. What does it mean? Just to cry a little bit, Hashem forgive me, is that enough? Let's see. Maya tshuva, the Rambam asks. What's tshuva? That a person automatically, from the day he decided to become Baal Tshuva, immediately would leave the scene. Tshuva, one big Tshuva, it's a combination of millions of small Tshuvot. You know what's the difference? For instance, I'll give you an example. A person that wasn't Shomer Shabbat, now he's correcting the scene of Shchilud Shabbat. So now he made Tshuva on Shabbat. Doesn't mean he made Tshuva about stealing. Doesn't mean he made tshuva about sins with the girls. Doesn't mean he made tshuva about kosher food. He made tshuva about Shabbat. So that's a partial tshuva. Then one day he makes uh, tshuva about stealing. He returns what he stole. He doesn't steal anymore. So now it's another tshuva. Two tshuva already. Now he makes another tshuva one day about eating kosher food strictly. So that's a third tshuva. The more tshuvot he makes, it adds to one long, big and perfect tshuva. When we speak in general about tshuva, we're talking about a, a recovering from all his sins. But there are also specific tshuva. A person can be religious all his life, but he has one problem. What is problem? Lashon hara. It happens, it's very, very common by religious people. They keep, they're very strict, they learn, they do things. Lashon hara, they talk here and there. Mm -hmm. One day they decide no more, especially after they watch the lecture we did here, email from God, if you came here that night. Mm -hmm. People who hear this, they, they think a million times before they say Lashon Hara. Okay? So Rambam says, Mai Yad Shuvah, Sheyazov achotech et ov yasiro mi machshavto. Two things right away. You stop making the sin, please pay attention. You stop making the sin, and you remove it from your mind. You don't want to think about it anymore. No? And eat it there. Yeah, we'll see. Ve'igmor belibo, and he will make a final decision in his heart. That he will never ever repeat that sin again. This is what the Torah says, Rasha, a wicked person has to leave his bad way. To leave it, to drop it. I'm not, I have nothing to do with that anymore. Not enough to leave the sin and to accept never to do it again. Not enough. He has to have a broken heart and to regret every time he ever made that sin. If not, it's not a perfect tshuva. If a person think about his girlfriend, Christine, that is not with her already here, he's never going to dare to be with her anymore or with any other Christine. But sometimes he sits in between learning and thinking, oh, I used to be a year ago, I used to go to that place. He passed in the area where he used to make the scenes, so he's now thinking in his car, how sweet were the scenes that I used to do. That shows that he's a faker, not a real bad tshuva. The real Baal Tshuva not only regrets deeply and with a broken heart the things he did against his creator, he's ashamed of it. Something that you're ashamed of, you never want to remember. If you got caught stealing in a supermarket in front of thousands of customers and the police came and they handcuff you and they put you in a car and everyone points at you, do you ever want to remember how delicious was that night that everybody saw me on television? You want to remember it? Why you don't want to remember it? Because it's a very big embarrassment. Who wants to remember it? As soon as someone talks about it, you change the subject right away. Huh? You're allergic to supermarkets from that time. So the Rambam said to regret, to be embarrassed of what he used to do. That the one who knows all mysteries will testify on him that he's clean. Who is the one who knows all mysteries? Hashem. Hashem. Why the Rambam didn't say Hashem? And he said, Ya'id alav yodea ta'alumot. Rambam could have said, until Hashem will testify on him, that is clean. Why? To highlight the idea is that if people testify on him, doesn't mean he's a real bad tshuva. Because people go by the beard. How long is the beard? That's how the mark goes up. Rabbi, but he had such a big beard. I said the Maharishi in India has much bigger beard. <laughs> and when he kissed B Buddha's feet every morning. No, the Maharishi doesn't have beard. Arafat didn't have a beard. Bin Laden doesn't have a beard. Huh? Soon even Obama will have a beard. <laughs> <laughs> I heard Obama, what, what's bother Obama today, you know what? And he heard the rumor that they said that he dies there. So they had to clarify to the media, God forbid, my husband doesn't die there. So, 
Big deal. He has maybe a little bit gray hair. That's what the that's what the president of the world has to deal with, if he dies there or not. No wonder he walks on a beach without his shirt, and everyone takes pictures of him and he brag. <laughs> Imagine a king at the time of the Torah walks like this without a shirt. That would be the last minute of his life, not the last minute of his kingdom. Let's move on. Shh. Not only that Hashem is testified that he will never return to this sin. Not only that Hashem said, this guy will not ever do that sin again. It's clean, that's it. He makes tshuva on that sin. Not only, the person still has to do every day vidui, confession. Who the Christians learn confession from? Where they got the idea of coming to confess for your sin? The Jews are 13 years before Christianity even started. They do vidui everywhere you go. Every Christian who ever saw a Jew, three times a day. Chatati, aviti, pashati, I did, I stole, I cheat, I did. Eh, the whole list. Rashkenaz doesn't do it. They do in the morning. The Ashkenazim don't have so many sins like uh, the Sfaradim. <laughs> At least that's what they think. <laughs> so they do only one vidui in the morning. But I know some Ashkenazim, like Nusquare Hasidim, they also do in Mincha. Yeah, mm-hmm. where I dive in Mincha by the Ashkenazim, two o'clock, they do, they do vidu, the Hungarians. Okay, that's different customs, but it doesn't matter. The idea is you don't need the tefillah to do vidu. You can sit in your car driving, crying, and tell Hashem, I did this, I did this, forgive me for this, forgive me for that. That's a confession. Now, if you confess in front of people, it's even better, because now you receive a lot of embarrassment, but it's not so simple. If you know these people do not know about your sins, and they hold highly of you, and you come and you say, I do this and this and this and sins, <laughs> it's going to be Chilul Hashem. First thing, no questions. First thing the people will say, oh, if this guy makes such sins, so I'm okay. Ah, I'm not such a tzaddik like him. He learns to run yeshiva 20 years. Ah, if he does it, ah, I feel great. Tomorrow, what's going to happen? He feel great about his Christine. <laughs> Why? Because, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm not the only sinner. Oh, he did it. He's a thief. He's a crook. I'm not the only one. That's the nature of people. In Hebrew, they have a beautiful say for it. Shh. No talking. It's disturbed me very much, the talking. Very much. Because you're very close to me. You know, it's not like I speak on the stage and you're far away. Try, try not to talk. One hour, we finish, and I'll let you go. So, why, why, why do they say in, in, in Hebrew? They say like this. Tzarat Rabim Nechamad Tipshim. There are two ways to look at that. One way is to say, Tzarat Rabim Chatsi Nechama. Problems of all the people, it's already half a comfort for the sinner. When a sinner is the only one who made the sin and everybody else was perfect, he feels horrible about his sin. But later when he found out that almost everyone in his class made the same sin, it makes him feel great. He says, oh, I'm not the only loser. Same thing when you fail the test. They have uh, 30 kids in the class. You are the first one who the teacher read your mark. That's how they used to do it in Israel. Moshe Cohen, 35. <laughs> Yitzhak Levi, 47. <laughs> this, 95. So the first person who heard that he fell, he feel horrible. But every second he feel better. Why? Another moron. Another moron. I'm not the only one. Here's another one. Here's another one. In the end, he feel great. Ah, no big deal. But in reality, it's the biggest stupidity. Why? You wanted to be a doctor. But you're not going to be a doctor because you failed the, the exam. What does it benefit you that other people also won't be doctors? Does it bring you more money to your pocket? No. That is... What? That's why the answer to all this foolish thinking is... Not only that Sarat Rabim, it's not Chatsi Nechama. The problems of the others, it's a comfort for the fools. Remember this. Sarat Rabim, Nechamat Tipshim. It's only benefits, supposedly, the, the, the illusion, it's for the people that are not smart. Someone who's smart, I can care less what they got. I have to worry about my own problem. Imen Anili, Mili. If I'm not going to take care of my soul, nobody will do it for me. The Rambam continues, the Rambam says like this. Everyone who makes confession, everyone who makes confession, and in his mind, he knows he's going to repeat that sin anyway. For instance, he goes like this. 
He comes to Shul on Yom Kippur. Hashem, forgive me, I'm a Mechal Shabbos, well, I'm so embarrassed, Chatati, you know, hop, oh, and right away, let's see Yom Kippur is on Thursday. In two days from now, he has a picnic with his friend, with his boat. They go in, a, in the middle of the Israeli beautiful Mediterranean ocean. On a picnic, shish kebab, on a boat. Two days from now, on Shabbat, they have a picnic plan. And he's standing in Yom Kippur with his talit. He paid $5,000 for the chair. Chatati, aviti, prashati. And then in two days, he has the grill. He's already made an order for the pork that they're going to do on Shabbat with his friends. Somebody like this, not only that he doesn't make repentance, he will get an extra punishment for his chutzpah. For coming on Yom Kippur and go like this. Abba Mechal El Shabbat, forgive me. And he has a planned picnic in two days to go. Well, you come standing in front of my judge in downtown Manhattan. Who am I, Mr. Williams? You want to fool me? Who am I, Obama? They can tell me stories. One day is with Husni, the next day is against him. Doesn't know his name, Bechlal. What, what, you, you're standing in front of me. I read your mind. I read everything you can think of. You're coming to tell me stories. You regret, you regret. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I stole. What do you mean you're sorry? Return the money. Then I'll know you're sorry. <laughs> Person said, Let, let's steal. He steal the money, now he comes, Hashem, Chatati, Ganavnu. He said, Ganavnu. Return the money. I have people who stole a lot of money from me. Every time they call, if I forgive them or not. I say, when you return the money, I'll forgive you. <laughs> but they don't want to return the money. They want to count on my generous heart that I'll help him to go to heaven after all. You understand? That's tshuva. Let's say I say, okay, okay, forget about the money. Take the money, whatever. Do you think Hashem will forgive them? Yes. And if they don't have to give it. If I forgive them with a hundred percent clean heart, if it's a hundred bucks, fine, you forgive a person. You don't want a, a person to go to Gehenna, but if a person takes ten years of your life, it's not so simple to forgive him. You know, unless if you're a Bishimon Bar Yochai, you can say, Machul, Machul, but in your heart, how do you know if a person is really forgiving or not? Every day, what do we say in the morning? Areani, Mochel Vesoleach. I'm forgiving everyone who did anything bad to me. Two hours later, he sees enemy in the street, he's ready to kill him. He with his wife in his car. Ah, I chopped this guy's head. Come, let's hit him with a car. Get rid of him once for all. Two hours ago, he said, Hashem, I forgive everyone who did something bad for me. So you want to know the truth? You're not allowed to say it. Also, before you go to bed, when you do, I forgive everyone, whatever. If you don't forgive, you're not allowed to say it. It's a lie. Midvar sheker tirchak. You're only allowed to lie in order to make peace between two Jews, to prevent Hilul Hashem, to save your life, to make peace, peace in a family. There are exceptions to the rule. To say a lie in front of Hashem is not, an it's not permitted. No permission to say a lie. No permission. So the Rambam says... If a person make a vidui and he did not leave the scene, Arehu is like a tovel v'sheretz beyado, going to the mikveh to purify himself, holding a dead dog in his hand. Nevela, tovel with nevela in his hand. You understand what's going on here? That's... Uh, that's not the right way to do tshuva.